Hello, my name is Greg G4CST, just uh, trying to find a little bit of Morse code. Okay, so there's a bit of random uh, random characters and LY2PX calling CQ. Uh, lots to explain. Um, let's have a look, first of all, let's see who your host is this afternoon. Okay, this is me, I think this is me, let's just have a look. Nope, that's not me. That's me. Good afternoon. Oh, hello. Good morning, depending on where you are. My name is Greg G4CST, and uh, I have designed and uh, and built this little device I have in front of me, uh, which is a Morse code decoder, and Morse code keyer, and CW filter, and 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 and. So you've just seen it in action. Um, let me just tell you a little bit about how it works. Um, there's a, there's a, a gain button, uh, sorry, a potentiometer, allowing you to change the gain of the device. Now, if you've got a noisy band and the gain is set high, the decoder is always searching for Morse code, so it will find elements in the noise um, which are of the right frequency. The input frequency of this device is 500 hertz. It will find elements of that noise, and so you'll get little random E's and T's uh, the decoder bases its um, uh, length of characters on the longest character that's found in the last few characters. So if the dash is, I don't know, 50 milliseconds long, it bases everything on a dash which is 50 milliseconds long and looks for a dot which is uh, approximately three times smaller than that. Um, which means that if you're listening to just the noise, um, that can take a while, just three or four characters. Uh, to catch up, uh, and then it will uh, it will synchronise to the um, to the right speed. Uh, the amplifier on the hardware side um, has a uh, an input range of one millivolt to six hundred millivolts, uh, which is an enormous dynamic range. That's before it gets to the A to D converter uh, and the software analysis. Um, the input values on the software decoder range from about 50 up to 4000 um, and the decoder will auto range uh, and set the threshold accordingly so when a strong signal comes in the threshold will go up all the noise will disappear and you'll get the nice pure signal that you saw when that uh, station was calling just now when the station stops calling uh, particularly if it's a noisy band uh, the threshold decoder then tries to find the noise the uh, agc brings up the noise, the decoder tries to find the, the what's happened to the morse, it tries to track it, uh, and so you can get some random characters. Uh, if the um, th This is the way that it copes with QSP, so you have a strong signal and a weak signal, and the uh, both the hardware and the software will both track that signal uh, as it goes up and down in the noise. 
which is a good thing. Uh, the unfortunate side effect of that is you do sometimes get some random characters and noisy bands. On a quiet band, uh, you get nothing at all. And so sometimes, even um, when the signals are relatively weak, uh, it's worth putting the attenuator in on your radio uh, because that helps you to, um, to, to, to reduce the, the incidence of the um, random characters. Uh, there is no way around that because um, it's constantly trying to find the signal at the lowest possible noise level. So uh, if, you have a, if you have a way around that, please let me know because I haven't found one. Um, but once it does lock onto a signal um, and then the threshold uh, system uh, and the AGC works very well to uh, to isolate that signal from the background noise so the signal you receive is uh, is actually very pure uh, the reader functions um, anywhere from uh, from about six words a minute up to 50 words a minute and i'll demonstrate that in uh, in a little while uh, the key here will operate from a manual key or a, a paddle key it operates in iambic mode a or b depending on your preference and you can vary the speed of sending. You can vary the uh, the pitch of the uh, side tone. Now, let me just mention something about the um, the amplifier and the uh, the CW filter. It's a very narrow band CW filter, uh, about 50 hertz, uh, 3 dB point from the center frequency. Um, so it takes a bit of setting up. And what I tend to do is find the signal with um, with the the FO tuning knob and then fine tune it with the RAT uh, on the um, on the decoder there is a little bar graph and uh, and the uh, as you tune across the uh, the signal um, you can tune to maximum which is you know you're you're heading for the best part of the signal so let's just hear the decoder itself um, we'll listen to some dw and we'll listen to the side tone so this is nothing to do with the reader uh, this is just about tidying up and cleaning up morse so that it sounds better so i'm going to unplug the speaker for a second switch on the radio and find some CW so there's the CW okay which is a bit of background noise I'll just put the microphone near the speaker so you can hear it it's actually disappeared off into the QSB now so um, yeah, even 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 I can't decode signals that aren't there. I'm just going to change the frequency of that slightly. Try and tune it in a little bit better when it's disappeared again. Actually, I think there are two different stations. That's the problem. You find one. Let's plug the loudspeaker in now and see what it sounds like uh, on the output of the filter. Okay, so that's... Um, that's the purpose of the filter, is basically uh, reproducing the ZW uh, on the speaker, uh, so you don't have to listen to all that noise and, and QSB and stuff. I mean, when it's when it's loud, it's loud. When it's not loud, it's not loud. Uh, until the signal disappears into the QSB, it always sounds the same on the speaker. So that's the um, that's the filter in the uh, in the in the in the CW reader doing its stuff. Just turn that off. Okay. So we've read some Morse. Uh, that's the application of the CW filter. The CW filter helps to uh, to filter out adjacent signals. Um, so only you know as little as even a quite strong signal, maybe less than 100 hertz away, is uh, is almost impossible to um, uh, to decode because the uh, the filter is narrow. Um, it could be narrower, um, but I think that would cause problems in tuning. So uh, I've left it as it is. You can still use the filters on the radio. Um, I would be aware of very narrow band filters because uh, that does tend to introduce some ringing 
and that can cause some distortion which tends to upset the um, upset the reader a little bit so let's have a look and see what we've got and see what else it does i'm just going to move the microphone bear with me two seconds that's not the microphone is it that's a that's a camera <laughs> i know i know what these things are really uh, okay so this is my loudspeaker okay it's just a, uh, a battery operated speaker which is used for um for everything actually it's bluetooth speaker but i unplugged it in at the moment um so that's that this is the uh, this is the cw decoder itself let me just unplug it so you can see it a little bit better okay we have um we have the power connecting here to the uh, it's an it's an arduino nano processor that does all the work and there's a little mini usb connector for that there's a um three and a half millimeter jack connector a stereo jack connector um for the uh, for the morse key it'll take either a straight key or a paddle there's the audio input which comes from the radio uh, three controls is the gain setting so you can increase or decrease the uh, the gain as i say on noisy bands it's a good idea to decrease the gain uh, to get rid of some of the noise uh, when you're sending um, you can change the uh, the pitch in fact you can the, the the software reads the pitch when it wakes up so whatever that's set to when the thing turns on is the pitch of the, the is the audio frequency that you'll hear when you are uh, when the filter is active and there is cw coming in and then there's a speed control so that you can adjust your sending speed from uh well literally zero to uh to 50 words a minute or thereabouts uh, i think it's pretty close to 50. on the right hand side um is a another, another uh, jack socket that's for the audio out and there's a connector here where you can connect anything you like to uh, but this is basically there's a relay here which isolates the output from the uh, from from this so this is just a relay contact which can act as a morse key so you can you can connect that to any uh, any transmitter uh, the input is isolated via this uh, isolating transformer the output is isolated via an isolating transformer so there is no direct connection between any of the power rails or anything on here to anything external that you're going to connect uh, it is completely isolated uh, there's a low pass filter at the front end to get rid of any rubbish and a high gain amplifier with uh, with oodles of agc to um to minimize the effect of, uh, of qsp uh, an lcd display you can fit a display with a backlight if you want to personally it's not my cup of tea um but the uh, on the power connector at the top here uh, there is a three volt input for the uh, for the backlight for an lcd so a standard 16 by 2 lcd display um with a backlight will uh, will operate from here um okay so that's the uh, the description of the device uh, let's see what it does exactly uh, first thing i'll do is connect some power to it and the computer has recognized it and it's woken up and it tells me on the display that it's running software version 3.2 which is the latest version of the software um what I'm going to do, uh, well, let me show you what I've got here. I've got a couple of Morse keys. This is a an old German Morse key. It's a wartime key, um, which I've put a shiny new knob on. This is my uh, this is my straight key, uh, which only one of the uh, one of the terminals is connected. And um, this uh, spooky enough is another German key. It's a Kent uh, paddle key. So I'm going to plug the uh, the speaker back into the uh, to the device, uh, and I'm going to plug in my straight key first of all. Okay, I'll turn up the volume on the um, speaker so you can hear it. Right. Um, now, if I turn the speed down to zero, bear with me. I'm just going to change the frequency of that slightly. So you can change the audio output frequency. And that's me playing with the straight key. Okay, and if I hold that down for a long period of time, that actually changes the iambic mode for the pedal key uh, from mode A to mode B. And if I hold it down again, 
it goes from mode B to mode A. So next time I plug the paddle key in, it'll be iambic mode A. Uh, it defaults to iambic mode A, uh, and you can change it to B just by pressing the key for a, a long period of time. So let's um, let's show you what's going on. Um, I'm going to open a terminal, which you can have a look at while I'm doing this. Give you my computer screen. Uh, the terminal I am using today is something called Putty, P-U-T-T-Y. Um, other uh, terminal emulators are available. Simple serial terminal, something called Termite. I think there's a Kitty. Uh, there's lots of them about. Anyway, I'm going to set it to serial. I'm going to set the COM port to 6 because that's what my Morse uh, magic is connected to. Set the uh, speed, the bode rate to 115, 200. Uh, for the purpose of the video, I'm going to increase the size of the characters uh, up to, uh, let's say, 36. OK, and I'm going to open the port. And this is the, um, the terminal now. I'll put that in full screen mode so you can see what's going on. So I have the straight key connected. So if I type in uh, a character, CQ. Okay. Other characters are available. <laughs> okay, so that's just decoding uh, characters from the straight key with the speed set at zero. If I turn the speed up using the right hand control, uh, it will now generate characters automatically. So I can't use the straight key because that's obviously no good in this situation. So I'm unplugging the straight key. I'm now going to plug in the uh, the paddle key. So on the left hand paddle, I've got dits. On the right hand paddle, I've got dars. Okay, I'm just going to move that down a bit so that it's out the way of that uh, irritating message at the top. Uh, right. Okay, so we'll try again. so on and so forth. Okay, so that's uh, me using my paddle key to generate the characters. I can turn the speed up. So on and so forth. I can turn the speed right the way down. Okay, uh, and if I change the iambic mode, You'll see it's now come up as mode B. And if I now turn the speed up. Okay, you can occasionally get, if you don't let go of the, um, the paddles in the right order, then it, it will generate extra characters. So I'll turn the speed down again. Hold the key down for a second and it's, uh, can, it's gone back to mode A. Okay, turn the speed back up again. And now I can send the Morse code properly again. Uh, it's up to this. Terminal's decided not to work now. Oh, there we go. Okay, so that's that working. Um, so that's using the Morse code key, the straight key or the paddle key to generate uh, Morse code. Um, the other thing you can do is you can actually type in characters on the keyboard. Uh, and the characters on the keyboard in this latest version of software, which is 3.2, uh, will generate the uh, appropriate Morse code. So if I type in G4CST, okay, and if you want that to go a little bit faster, uh, let's just type in the characters on the keyboard. So it will generate Morse code uh, from the uh, terminal. It will generate Morse code from a straight key. It will generate Morse code from a paddle key. Uh, and of course, we can connect it to the transmitter so that it will transmit that code as well because we have the uh, the relay output. And I can demonstrate that uh, if I can find the right piece of wire. Uh, bear with me. Let's 
So I'm just going to plug that wire. I'm just going to turn the terminal off for a second, uh, so that I can see that you can see what's going on. Uh, okay, I have a uh, I have a little socket connected to the key output. I'm going to connect that to my transmitter. Turn the transmitter on. Move the camera around so you can see what's happening on there. Oops. And you can see the little light up here, the transmit light comes on when I'm transmitting. And if I send some code from the keyboard, uh, when I've got the terminal connected, Okay, so G4 CST. Test. Okay, so that's the uh, that's it operating the transmitter. So the transmitter will operate either from um, the um, uh, the keyboard um, or the Morse key. Uh, let's just close the terminal. Right, so what have I not covered? Um, there is a bar graph display on the uh, on the device, which I think I forgot to mention. Um, and that display will give you the um, the, uh, the signal strength, which helps for tuning. I don't know if I mentioned tuning, I tend to use the tuning knob initially, and then use the uh, the clarifier or RIT to uh, to fine tune the signal because the bandwidth of the signal of the uh, of the filter. Is, uh, is is quite narrow, very narrow in fact, about 3 dB down at uh, plus or minus 25 hertz, uh, maybe 30 hertz, um, but, uh, but pretty good anyway. So here we have a Morse code decoder that will read signals from 1 millivolt up to 600 millivolts. It will read from 0 to 600, 600 to 50 words a minute, <laughs> 600. It probably would actually, but no, it wouldn't go that fast. Um, you can transmit using a, a straight key. You can transmit using a paddle key. You can transmit using iambic mode A or iambic mode B, or you can just use the uh, the serial terminal on your computer uh, and do the whole thing from there. And you don't need to go near a Morse key, and you don't need to know Morse code. Um, so it's you know it, it does a lot of things. Um, Let's see some of the things it also does. Uh, I'm going to change, just going to plug something in. I just want to show you the bar graph display. Uh, bear with me. Apologies for the uh, the moving image. Uh, upside down, right side up. Right side up, there we go. Okay, so if we're using the paddle key, um, it would always show you the transmitted signal at one half of the um, one half of normal speed if the speed is set to zero sorry half of the display not normal speed half of the display if you set the speed to transmit speed to zero so that it's in straight key mode um, then it will show you the full display so you know which mode you're in so if you hit the key and it's halfway up then you know you're in uh, in um, Morse code mode uh, if I turn the speed down, hold the key, you'll see that's changed from iambic mode A to B. If I do that again, it changes to mode A. So now I've got the pedal key, I can turn the speed back up again. Takes just a few seconds to, uh, to catch up when you change modes. Um, anyway. And so on and so forth. So that's when you're in transmit. When you're receiving, I'll now turn the radio back on and find some CW. As I tune through the signal, that's disappeared. I'll disconnect the speaker actually, it might be more helpful if the speaker's disconnected for this. Okay, so you can hear it from the radio. And we're going to tune for maximum value on here. 
OK, when we've got the maximum value, then we know that we've, uh, we're correctly tuned. OK, you always get the, uh, always get the end of a transmission. Right, here's see who's calling. HA39Z. A little bit of excessive QSB there. When it uh, disappears into the noise, obviously it can't uh, it can't cope with that. And the sensitivity is turned down at the moment. I'll just turn the sensitivity right up. Now what will happen is that the threshold would now seek that Morse code. So you'll see there's a few random characters as it tries to find the signal that it's just lost. Okay, HA3GZ, there seems to be a gap between the 3 and the G. That's not the decoder, that's the sending that's doing that. So the decoder will correctly decode the spaces between characters and between words as they should be. You must be right on the edge of the, uh, of the characteristics for that particular speed. But there we go, so that's the, uh, that's the Morse coder. So, I think that's all I have to... Um, all I have to tell you about it. Um, it's taken me, where are we now, June, May, May. It's taken me four or five months to develop this piece of uh, piece of apparatus and write the software. Um, and it's uh, it's been an interesting journey. And, uh, and obviously if I can share the, uh, the benefits of this with other people, so much the better. It's been a lot of hard work. I've had a lot of fun. Um, and uh, hopefully it will be able to bring, uh, bring the joys of CW to those who perhaps um, for whatever reason, maybe um, lack of hearing or, or, or memory or whatever. Um, or just those people who want to get into CW haven't been before. Uh, and, and I think um, the journey of learning can only be assisted uh, by watching on the screen as characters come in. Uh, and of course you want to listen to very high speed Morse, which, uh, which you can't do if you'll listen to Morse at 35 to 40 to 50 words a minute. Um, most people can't decode that, uh, so it's a good uh, a good aid to that as well. So, if you're into contesting, maybe that's uh, something you might want to do as well. I hope that's been of help, uh, of interest, and um, please feel free to email me. Uh, my email address is greg4cst at gmail dot com. That's G R E E G Golf Romeo Echo Golf uh, four number four. Charlie Sierra Tango, G R E G four S C S T, Greg four C S T, um, at gmail.com. And um, any questions, please don't hesitate to ask. Hope you've enjoyed the video, and uh, sorry it's taken me half an hour. <laughs> See you again soon.